partners. Hey, welcome to another segment of Credit Makes Sense with Natsiva, the Fruco Credit Nista, where we make sense of your money, your credit, and everything in between. Super excited to be with you guys here today. I'll let you guys roll on in. You know, another video that I did before I didn't share. So I want to make sure that I share today, and I want to encourage you to share as well. We want to spread accurate financial knowledge because we've got some transformations to happen in our community. So I'm going to go ahead and share to my communities, my people, my partners, and please do the same. For those of you who are not familiar with me, um, again, I'm Nessa with the Frigo Credanista. I own m &H Financial Services, uh, where we help women and couples create custom credit solutions to crush their financial goals. I also run the awesome community credit makes sense where we talk about mastering our money destroying our debts and sorting their credit scores and i am the founder of the epic credit on fire academy which is a membership platform a members club of my wealth creators where we talk about repairing restoring rebuilding our credit scores and leveraging it to create wealth so we talk a lot about destroying our debt mastering our money um definitely saving and investing our money and also leveraging our credit for entrepreneurial opportunities, business credit, as well as investing in real estate. So it's an opportunity to actually build on what you have been working so hard to get together. So being that it's credit on fire, I talk a lot about credit. I'm a certified credit counselor as well as a realtor. So I'm always talking about 10 x in your credit, managing your money so you can leverage it for primarily real estate investments. So that's my thing. <laughs> All right, let's get going. I'm answering some of the questions. I actually have one for my Credit Makes Sense community and one from one of the emails that you guys sent me and it is centered on um, ownership so one of them and I like to read them verbatim because otherwise I'll forget them and again the email address to send your questions to is listed up there if you're on uh, Facebook down here if you're on Instagram and YouTube so um, I am looking to perhaps buy another home or how possible it is for me to buy another home my mortgage company is processing my request for mortgage assistance um, they confirmed the documents that they are waiting on. My credit reports have suppressed the late payments that are being reported by my mortgage company. This is the only account that I have ever been laid on ever. Didn't know how another mortgage lender would consider that. Mm, okay, well, let's talk about FICO and the different um, industries that they cover. So FICO has a score for auto, it has a score for bank cards, AKA credit cards, it has one for mortgages, and then it has different versions of their score. The mortgage industry, I think it's mortgage industry options FICO, anyway, it's the mortgage FICO score. <laughs> and it is the oldest one that they have, which means it's the more stricter one. And so since it's tailored just to the mortgage industry, they are going to look at how well you have managed other mortgage loans, either currently or in the past, and then it goes to the next tier, which is just installment loans. So it doesn't ignore credit cards and personal loan and all this other awesomeness that you've been um, handling your finances with as far as um, your other credit accounts. It doesn't ignore that, but it does put more emphasis to how well you've been managing your mortgage accounts. So since you have late payments on your mortgage accounts, that's going to weigh heavily on that FICO, uh, the mortgage uh, industry options FICO score. It's going to weigh heavily on that. So it doesn't look good. And it doesn't look good for a lender because they're going to look at, okay, she's had this mortgage loan. She's been late, whether it not paying, paying late or what have you. And now she wants to take out another 30 year loan with us. So I would say to strictly focus on right now, deciding if you want to keep the current home that you're in, or if you want to sell it, whether it's be a short sale, a deed in lieu, where you give it back to them, not too many banks do that, but some of them do, a deed in lieu, or doing a strategic foreclosure. I don't talk about strategic foreclosures a lot, but that's basically where you guys come to an arrangement where you're going to basically say, it's not a deed in lieu because they're not accepting the back, but you're basically saying, I don't want it anymore. You can still try to sell it, still, you know, try to short sell it, but basically you don't want it anymore. And um, you start making moves within your own finances and your own decisions and rebuilding credit and all of that good stuff. And you do that over two years and then repurchase. Um, actually three years and repurchase again uh, some if you're on a state that has like a deficiency balance uh, basically that means that when you foreclose and they sell it then um, whatever amount is left over from the amount that they sell it for and that you owe they're gonna come after you for it and try to sue you for it so some people fall bankruptcy if that's the issue and then they um, buy again in two years 
you don't think that's gonna work for you. And I, it's not something that I encourage, so please don't think that just because I gave you that information, I'm saying, hey, go file bankruptcy. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. What I am saying is I'm giving you all of your options in general, because I don't know your full financial picture. So when you send me this information, I'm giving you general advice because you haven't given me anything but what you wrote in that email. So those are your options. I always like to prefer, if this is the only negative thing that you got going on, decide if you're gonna keep the house or if you're going to sell it. You're talking about buying another house, so that must mean that something's going on that you don't want this house, yet you're asking for mortgage assistance and you're having these late payments come on month after month after month. And I know firsthand from my own experience that when you are working with these banks and trying to get any type of assistance or loan modification or what have you, it takes a while. So decide if you wanna keep this or are you just trying to like, roll into a new house because you're frustrated with them. Um, so that's something only you can offer, you can answer. So if you wanna keep it and you wanna ride out with this mortgage assistance, I would see if you can get the loan modified to permanently reduce your, um, your mortgage payment or um, see if this mortgage assistance, if it's gonna be long-term, short-term, work out your budget to see if this is a house that you can actually afford and make that decision from here. If it's not something that you can afford while you're waiting, slap it on the market, Think about where you're going to be uh, renting at or what your other housing options are going to be. And well, you probably wouldn't do that before you slept on the market. <laughs> so do that first. And then, you know, if everything's copacetic and you're comfortable with that decision, you know, put it on the market and, and free yourself from it. Build up over the next um, two to three years if it's sales, if foreclosures, what have you, and, and move forward from there. But I wouldn't be thinking about another house right now. I would take care of this situation right now. And if you listened intently to my answer, it's all, it's kind of like, if you do this, you do this. If you do that, you do this. It's because you have to decide what you want to do. And then based on what you want to do, it's going to be a couple of variables in place. Am I going to keep it? Then I want a loan modification or I want some type of assistance that's going to uh, impact me permanently and not temporarily. Sometimes they put you in these temporary situations. It's great but then it goes back to where you are now, which is struggling with it. So that ain't gonna work. It's gotta be a permanent solution um, that's going to benefit you. And then if you're going to get rid of the home, then it's a matter of, am I gonna try to give it back to them? Am I gonna try to do a short sale? You didn't talk about the value of your home or am I going to um, sell it? And then you know it can wipe me clean or actually put a little change in your pocket. So those are only things that you can answer. I can't answer that for you. So hope that helps. hope that helps you. Um, okay. Yeah. I don't want to talk of deficiency balance too much. Um, uh, miss getting my act together. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it too much because, um, not too many states actually have that. And I'm not too big on you know, the strategic because usually when people say strategic foreclosures, it's kind of like you purposely got a foreclose and then you've been stacking your money and had money and then you go and buy another house cash or something like that. So I don't want to talk about that. Uh, publicly <laughs> no seriously I don't want to talk about that because it's not the most ethical situation um, to go into all right Gabby asked I want to purchase real estate property is there a way around getting a way around waiting two years after my chapter 13 has been discharged um, this is a chapter 13 interestingly enough Gabby you don't have to wait two years after discharge. You can actually be in the chapter 13 bankruptcy, whether you did the three year or the five year, and um, you can get a house. So with FHA. So with FHA, you only have to be paying on time for one year. Obviously it has to be documented. And as long as everything else, um, as far as your unique financial situation, it's their approval guidelines, you're good. So that means your credit gotta be on point, that means your debt to income ratio's gotta be on point, you gotta be paying everything on time, and you especially have to be paying the uh, payments within your chapter 13. And once you do that, you're good to go with FHA to purchase your home. So you don't have to wait two years after the chapter 13 discharges, you have to wait two years after the chapter seven uh, discharges. So with your chapter, if you are already, um, you said it discharges September of 2018, so you're already good. You can look now, but if you want to be completely discharged um, and not paying period, which I recommend because then you don't have to worry about that amount being factored into your debt to income ratio, then uh, after September, you don't have to wait anymore. You can go ahead and go to um, a lender and get pre-qualified. So you're in a good, good position. Um, 
Let me see. I'll answer one more. Actually, let me grab one from you guys. I don't want to go to the list that my team gathered together to me. So let me actually go to one of you guys' question. Let's see. Okay, let's do this one. Um, Toya asked about utilization. She's not using her credit card. She just paid them off. <laughs> She just paid them off and she doesn't want to use them again. Man, do I know this. It's like, oh my God, I just paid them off. I don't want any more debt, but that's because you're associating, I'm gonna do another live on this actually. You're associating um, credit with debt. A lot of people say credit is your debt score. And I guess in some cases it is true, but in our society, credit isn't optional, be optional because so many things factor into our credit scores, right? So we have... Um, not so many things. So many people use, industries use our credit scores. So we have our utilities, we have cell phones, we have, um, what else? Employment, insurance, like so many of those, getting an apartment, getting a home. So, so many things rely on that credit score that having less or subpar credit is no longer an option, especially if you want to save some things, own some things or build some things. Okay. So I would say that you should use the method that I used, um, especially when I was post-bankruptcy and that I use with my clients and that I teach everywhere. And that's to pick something that you're already paying on and then use that with the credit card. So it's not saying you're going to spend the money and then use a credit card instead. No, you got the money. It's budgeted out. You're going to pay with the credit card. And then when the statement comes, you're going to pay the credit card with that money. Obviously, your budgeting got to be on point. That's the number one reason why we talk about money and credit because they go hand in hand. I always see these posts. Which one would you rather have, money or a credit score? Uh, both. Okay. You don't have to choose. Have both. So in your case, I will look at your list of expenses, preferably a fixed expense, and then pay it with your credit card and then automate the payment to come from whatever your bill account is when that statement comes out. And that way you're not creating new debt. But let me go ahead and answer a question. I didn't answer it, right? <laughs> How is a $0 every month reporting on your credit cards? Well, A, congrats on paying them all off. B, 0% sucks. Um, I don't know where you are in the rebuilding stage, but not using anything, that means that a huge chunk of the FICO scoring algorithm is not being um, used. You're not using it. So, and I should have brought, I should have had put this on Zoom because I could have shared my screen, could have shared the FICO pie, but in the different um, categories that FICO uses to calculate our scores, the amount old category is the second largest chunk. It makes up 30% of our scores and a huge chunk of that 30% is based off of our credit uh, card usage. So if yours is a zero, you're not, your scores are not going to be as high as they could be. So, um, Yeah. That's, that would be my answer. I would I try to find a way that's easy for you, that's not, that's not going to increase your debt for you to integrate it into your current budget. And if you don't have a budget, get one. Guess what I teach all of you at? All of this at Credit on Fire Academy. Creditonfire.us, creditonfire.us. And we literally walk you through all that. Budgeting, getting out of debt, proper usage of credit card, the great um, credit cards, how to integrate it into your budget, all of that good stuff. Because it's so important that while we build our credit, that we use it for what it's intended to. It's a tool. Like I said, we use it to save money on things. If you've ever um, had to buy a car or get insurance with jacked up credit, oh my God, it's so high. If you ever have to put a deposit just to get your lights or your other utility cut on, that's absurd, especially with something that you can easily control, So, which is improving your credit by not adding on debt. That's confusing, let me know. <laughs> So, okay, that actually, you know what, I'll take one more before I wrap up out of here. Um, let me see. You know, they come in slow, guys, so I got to kind of scroll up in order to uh, read them. Once you hit 700 credit score with no recent negatives and low utilization, how can you make your score go higher? You're in a gardening stage. I'm going to talk about this a little bit later on. I went through this after I had soared my credit scores just a little under the mid 700s, maybe about almost three years post filing for bankruptcy, right? And it just got stuck. And you know why? It's because I hadn't been doing enough good stuff long enough. So you could get like an authorized user account, one that's actually going to stay because the ones that you pay for usually are very short term as far as how long it stays on your account. So if you have anyone that you personally know with long, great credit, 
then doing that will be great um, because it's going to give you the age that you need. That positive payment history, 35% of your scores, low utilization, 30% of your scores, and a longer length of age, credit age, which is 15% of your scores. So that is definitely one way to do it. Um, other than that, keep going. I mean, 700s is great. I mean, I know it's not like school. You're like, I got to get that A. I got to get that 850 credit score. It takes people a while to get to 850 if they've had some blemishes that haven't fallen off. Um, I don't know. You said no recent negatives. So it's not like you say you didn't have none <laughs> or if they're still reporting on your credit report. Right. So that's that's something that I don't know. But keep that utilization low. Keep your payments timely. If you have quality cards in your wallet, do not go apply for everything else. Um, actually, my uh, community manager, Faith, just posted about um, one of the things that soared her to the 800s was that she had to really fight the urge to apply for stuff just because she can get it. I'm going to see if she can do like a bigger commentary on that inside of Credit on Fire uh, because that is something that I'm telling you, it affects us so much as we start seeing the increase and then it's like, oh, I can get this, oh, I can get this because we've been living in restriction and denial uh, world so long. We in that denial lane and now we getting approved and we want to go out there and get, 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 get. Stop it. <laughs> that is not what your credit is used for, honey. So I'll do, I mean, in fact, let me write that down. I don't have a pencil. It's hard to get this, remind me, especially those of you in my credit, um, credit makes sense community. Remind me to do a live on that. But yeah, I will do that. So all right, let me write out of here again. If you are looking to 10X, 10x your efforts in mastering your money, destroying your debt, and soar your credit scores, you need to be on credit on fire. $25 a month gives you access to a series of sequential step-by-step -step course, uh, courses that walk you through all of this, in addition to lives every two weeks with myself, in addition to live lessons from some of my expert team of wealth partners who are in various industries to not only teach you how to build, but how to create wealth, begin creating wealth in various industries from stock investing to real estate investing, wholesaling, etc. So, all right, guys, left the link for you to do that. If you're not inside of my free community at the very least, then definitely join. I left the link for that as well. You got questions for me for my next Credit Makes Sense segment, then I left the email address to send it to. I always like to send a reminder. You send me some documentations, I'm going to share it on this screen. So make sure that your information is X out. If you um, send me documentation but don't want me to share, you put like to keep this anonymous, but it doesn't make sense to answer the question so that everybody can benefit. You're going to have to pay for a consultation. <laughs> Real talk, you're going to have to pay for the consultation then. Um, and if you want to be kept anonymous, you don't want to be like, hey, Cheryl, girl, you know, then you need to tell me. Tell me don't say my name on uh, or when you do your live. I want to be anonymous. I don't like people in my business, so let me know. I must admit, I don't take too many anonymous questions because uh, then everybody be doing it. So I always give preference to the ones who don't mind me shouting them out because I think it's so brave to share with the world. I'm not exactly where I am, but I know I can get there and to reach out for assistance. That is like super dope because so many people try to do it by themselves unnecessarily when uh, resources such as Credit Makes Sense assessment, such segments, such as my uh, Credit Makes Sense group, such as my Credit on Fire Academy, which is definitely worth about $100 a month, but I keep it low so everyone can gain access, not only to myself and my team, not only to my teachings, but also access to other individuals um, who come in because their passion is to help us grow and expand individually. You always know I say, communities are made stronger and financially solvent one family at a time okay so that's why they reach out and i appreciate you guys so much for that. all right enjoy the rest of your day partners chat with you soon bye-bye <laughs>